shut up compressor. Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Duke's Models, and this is the Flank Off. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to the Flank Off for what I hope is going to be a pretty fun installment. This time around we're going to be finally getting into paint. Now I've been gone for the past few weeks, traveling all over the place, and that has definitely put a kink in my productivity and it's taken a couple days since I've been back to really feel like I'm at home in the bench again. I've also been dealing with all of the various pylons and missiles and shit like that, but I finally last night managed to get where I could start priming and so we're pretty much ready to move forward there's just one little glitch I have to consider masking all kinds of little bullshit panels now on the SU-35 let's see if I can there are outside of the engines a bunch of other little areas that need to be masked off you know there's shit on the spine, there's shit on the leading edges of the leading edge extensions and the wings, and things like that that I need to deal with first. And fortunately, most of those are kind of the same tone of gray, which Mr. Paint actually happens to make, MRP-47. This is their Russian aircraft radio antenna covers from 1960 to present, and compared to you know, the reference photos I've I've uh, saved and looked at pretty obsessively. This is a pretty close match. You know, there's some variances, but I think the variances are accounted for by white balance and lighting and things like that. This seems pretty much where it needs to be. So first and rather boringly, uh, we're gonna have to go in there and paint all those different sections and then come through with the crazy galaxy masking sheets and mask all of them off. After that, we'll be able to move into the light blue and the darker blue and the gray and all that. And I'll probably move into a little bit of that tonight, uh, just because I'm impatient and honestly, there are a bunch of areas that need to be painted with this gray, but there are a lot of areas that don't. And so I can, think I can kind of play in the spaces where that's possible and get a bit of color down as well. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're all set to go with MRP-47 in the GUNS PS-770. Okay, it's time to start in on something like the main event with MRP-297, which is the SU-35 light blue, which goes all over the underside here.
So fast forwarding just a little bit, as you can see I've got some more of the light blue painted in here. I've also gone and masked off the various gray elements with mostly masks from the wonderful Galaxy model masking set. Although these ridges along the leading edge extensions here, the masks in the set seemed way too thick to me, so I, I have gone ahead and done these in Azu tape. Same difference. But let's go ahead and get some painting going. Now, for the most part, these blue camoed SU-35s are still pretty clean, and so we're going for more full coverage than I would typically go for, but I'm trying to, you know, get at least close to representing what these things are. Maybe add a little bit of, you know, extra variation just for the sake of some drama. But definitely do not want to overdo it. I'm going to cut out for a bit and come back once I've got the underside done. Okay, so the SU-35's underside is more or less wrapped. I'm probably going to come back in here and do a few sort of touch-ups and whatnot, but I want to get the whole thing sprayed first and then come back around and see what I think of what's going on in all these different areas, you know, between the pylons, maybe up here in the, in the intake ramp, there's a little bit of, you know, perhaps darkness that I'd like to maybe make a bit more solid, and also in here on this inside portion of the intakes. But for the time being, I have moved my attention to the upper side, where I've got to start on the camo pattern with the light blue. As you can see here on fins, we've got the darker blue and the gray working nicely in there. But I'm gonna go ahead and get all the blue, to, blue down and then move into the darker blue and the gray. And that requires getting the airbrush going. Okay. So in different areas here, it's time to either blend, like we've got in this spot, or I still need to do the marbling before I do the blending in all kinds of areas over here. This stuff is lapped up on me a little bit, so let's do another quick tack job. Now, one thing that I saw with the fins up here is that even if the blue doesn't look as solid as it does, once these other colors start coming in, it doesn't matter as much. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. And one of the things that can get you into trouble with black basing, where you're just looking at essentially the contrast of one color and it can look like it's you know underdone but then you start adding other colors to the mix and your eye and the optical illusion of what's happening can get the better of you and so it looks like you know the blue is way undercooked but then you put other colors down and oh shit the blue looks overcooked at that point so when i'm doing camouflage schemes like this i try to get the colors about you know 80 percent of the way there and then reevaluate, come back and do more as I need to. So you get the idea. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause here and get the rest of the blue infilled and then we'll pick back up when I start moving into the grays and the blues. Okay, so now that the light blue is in place, it's time to start filling in some of the light gray. Now this is one of those colors that, as you'll see, it gets seems to get darker as it, as it sets up. Mr. Paint can be funny that way, where some colors seem to get lighter, others seem to get darker. 
one challenge to freehanding camo like this is you kind of want to come in you know over so that you're spraying in to cut down on overspray but we've got you know this edge over here where getting in that way is going to mean coming over the wing like this that's really going to be a lot easier to do with gloves and holding the damn thing, so... For now, let's just get close. Okay, so we've got the light blue and the gray in a happy place. Now it's time to bring in the darker blue, which is MRP 298. Now this looks really light, but it gets darker as it sets up. So, go ahead and start the process. Okay, as you can see, yeah, that's definitely darker than it seems when it's in the bottle, right? So I'm going to go ahead and get to the rest of this, not bore you with watching me cover in all of the camo here. And then once that's done, we'll come back and we'll do all the touch-up stuff. All right, all right, all right. We have got the dark blue down on the SU-35. So now the basic color blocking is complete. Next up, we get to come in here and get the light blue and the gray, especially a bit more blended in and sharpen up these lines on the camouflage a little bit. Now, one fun thing is it's been so hot and so humid because it's July in Texas that I have started adding retarder to my Mr. Paint. Why? Because it, again, is so damn hot that I am getting dusting in various places. Which sucks. Okay, so the goal of this go around is to get the light blue sections here a bit more filled in. Do the larger zones first, then we'll come back in and worry about the edging. For added fun, June bugs are randomly back, even though it's July, and they keep hitting me. So those of you who like to tune in for the fun June bug action, might be in luck. There we go. Seriously? Right where I'm fucking painting? Fuck off. June bugs are such assholes. So let's carry this through and then I'll pick it back up when we start doing more interesting, fun things because I think we've seen enough of this. Okay, so I've skipped a little bit ahead and gone ahead and more or less finished out the camouflage and moved into the various spot areas that need to be dealt with with the Galaxy paint mask set. So as you can see back here around the engines, there's all these little bits that are silver and dark silver and whatnot. There's the heat shield for the gun, there's some vents up here, and way up front here there are a couple different panels that need to be different colors. So, you know, nothing super fancy, but I want to make sure that I don't get any overspray because spraying metallics tends to do that more than, say, Mr. Paint. So that is that, and in order to go ahead and knock these out, I am going to be using K-Colors metallics because I had good experiences with those on the stabilators, and I want to try them out further. Now, these are, even though the rest of K-Color stuff is largely water-based, these are alcohol-based, so good to know going into it. 
And for this, I'm going to be using my HPC Plus. I prefer to go bigger with metallics, I usually do, but again, we're trying to be mindful of overspraying. Now, this is the 60, which is natural steel. And these ones back here are tricky because it's really hard to get a good look, but these hinges in here and these forward panels seem to be brighter as does this and then these two little or these four little I don't know what the hell they are but they seem to be a darker color so I've got a plan for that as well now we're gonna go ahead and get the heat shield in here See here, that's a shiny ass metallic. We're gonna flop this guy on its back. And come around to this side so we can go ahead and do this portion of the, of the uh, gun shield. Um, this is where I'm a bit freaked out by overspray in particular. So, pardon me if you get a shitty view of this. surface tension issues. Fortunately, it's on that underside where it's not going to be seen all that much, right? Yeah. There we go. That looks better. I'm going to flip this guy back around and we're going to do one more coat on that heat shield just to make sure we are in a happy place with it. Okay. Now I'm going to pause, change colors, and come back and get these four little bastards back here. Okay, for the next bit of fun, we are going to be trying black chrome. Now, I have not sprayed this yet, but it does not look all that black. It looks more like a dark, not quite to gunmetal color. So, it'll be fun to see how this interacts with the Guns GX2 base. Load it up. And because the stabilators, or sorry, the tails, really make it tough to get in there. Okay. So I'm going to clean up the airbrush and have a bit of an unmasking party here and then we'll check back with progress. Okay, so here we are with the fully painted up SU-35. It's a big mother and it's tough to shoot on the bench because I can't get the camera far enough away. But you can see the camouflage, you can see the engines and the little metallic details back in here. Stabilators, which I'm happier with now that the engines have been unmasked. And then, of course, all the gray antenna areas, including the radome, the anti-glare panel, which is black, obviously. It's overall looking pretty good. So it is time to wrap up this video and Stick around for the next installment of the flank off, which I believe will probably be decals.